This is oil-based ink, which is why I'm wearing this apron. It's going to get messy on Dark World today. Dark World, everyone. It's time for exciting things, art making and stories. Today, it's so special. It's the beginning of April. And I'm just going to tell you, a little, uh, while I'm doing this, I have a, have a lot to cover. So I'm just going to start talking while I'm doing this. April is a special theme. All of the month of April, I'm going to be making drawings and prints of sightings. This is sightings of people out in public that I've taken with my phone. I have it over there. Pictures on the phone. Sometimes they know, sometimes they don't know. But if you're like me and you like to watch people and you like to observe, you will sometimes see one particular person or two at a time that just do not leave your memory. They etch themselves in your mind, their clothing, their persona, the way they present themselves in the world. They become like my heroes, like my characters, and they just become part of the mythology of the world that I create. And so I'm going to share some of those people just with the past few weeks that I've seen in the Bay Area. There are so many people like that here that I feel like incredibly grateful that I can just capture them with my phone and then draw them later. So right now, I'm going to be covering this piece of glass with oily ink and making my own carbon paper. So this is a technique I watched someone else do here at the compound and I don't know what, what it's called but I know that it's so amazing. And if you've been looking at my Instagram or my Facebook, I've been posting a lot of experimental prints using this technique. I think there's a, there's like a lot of ink on this. There might be too much. So the people that I've seen this week in all different kind of normal, regular places have stuck out in my mind so much that I've had to create names for them. This is, this is, my, this is how it is for me, you guys. I make names for them. I make a whole story of their lives, and I don't care if it's real or not, it's just so beautiful and so much fun. So sometimes they are abusing fashion in a way that is offensive and awful to my eyes, but it's just my awful to my eyes. It might be beautiful to them. It might be like inspiring to them. So it's just subjective. It's just, it doesn't really matter good or bad. If they've stuck in my mind, kind of like art, if it sticks in your mind, it's something happened. And the, uh, and the result was what it intended to do, which was create an impression. So this is going to be my huge piece of, because one of the characters, like actually two of the characters I'm going to do, are going to take up a lot of room. So let's move this guy aside. So next week I have a special guest coming on the show. She's the owner of Slash Denim in Oakland. And... Actually, maybe it's Berkeley. It's right on the border. It's on College Avenue. It's the best denim store that I've ever seen. I think that might be in the whole world. And she is also an observer like me. She likes to capture all of the, the essence of Berkeley with her camera phone. So she is going to be coming out onto the show t next week. And I'm so excited. Her name is Julie, and she's hilarious. So here is a lot of ink, probably too much. So I'm just going to, like scrape off some of the extra. So the first person, I'm just going to skip the bad drawing book today because I just want to launch right into the sightings because this has been an incredible week. I don't know, I think it's springtime and people are just like donning their new fashions. They're going out more. It's sunny. Well, not yesterday. But, but actually, one of the people that I'm going to draw I actually saw last year, but I took a picture on my phone and I remembered her. And... Uh, so I think the first person that we'll do is a lady that I saw at, in line at Wells Fargo. And I don't know what her name was. I have no idea because they don't let you get that close. And it's good that they don't. You know, that would be creepy. And I also think it might be illegal at the bank to do that. But she was wearing, I think, what, from what I could gather from all of my watching, she was wearing a very provocative outfit. She was probably over 60. And I think she was flirting with the teller relentlessly, making him really uncomfortable, and eating one of those lollipops one after the next, and staying things like and just like leaned on the leaned on the counter and just like relentlessly flirt flirting with the teller. I really appreciate her because sometimes at Wells Fargo I don't want to talk, and 
she was just really getting she was really, really getting back at Wells Fargo. She was just talking and talking, and they, they couldn't because of their excellent customer service, like turn her away. And so she's kind of like a superhero for me. If I touch this a lot, it's going to get really really dark. So right now I'm just gonna like all I did was see her from the back. I saw her tiny mini backpack. It was almost like hanging off of her like a parasite. It was like tiny, like one of those, like one of those fish that, that attaches onto the whale. <sighs> Except it was trailing behind her, sort of. Like it was too loose. Like she didn't want to have it too tight and like to constrict or to obscure like all of the straps, all of the lines that her bra straps were making. It was the most intense fashion statement that I've seen in a long time. And I, you guys, I'm, I have to admit, like, I do this sometimes. I follow people down the street several blocks to, like, get pictures of them. If they really stick out in my mind, I will follow them. And I am not proud of that. But it does happen. I've heard that I'm not good at it, that people do know, but I don't think that they do. I actually think I'm good at it, but I've been told it. It's very obvious what I'm doing from, from, from friends and also from loved ones. I choose to believe that I'm an expert, you know, like a spy. I just choose to believe that. So the bob actually wasn't like, it was even bigger than this is not doing it justice. It was like even bigger. It was like really big. You know how those aliens have the head that's really, really big? And you know, with this technique, you have to you have to press fairly hard, and you can't touch the you can't touch the paper, or you'll always get thumbprint. So they have to be almost like really intentional lines, and really really quick. You can't really you can't be too detailed. Okay, and then so that was, and so her body was actually kind of small. Like I want to walk, show her like eating one of the big, these little sucker things they give you at. Wells Fargo, and she was like flirting with this teller, and she was just like, it was really, and her husband was right there. It was, it was, it was an intense, um, there, was, there was like a lot going on with that scene, what I was witnessing. I was probably making up the entire thing, and actually like nothing was going on, but for me, and then I think she was just like, hey. And then there was like, it's kind of like hard to describe exactly what was happening, but you know how those caterpillars, before they make a cocoon, they have like, they're just like, really, they have a lot of segments on them. That's kind of what the lady looked like. It was like completely unflattering outfit, but she loved. So how can you argue with that? And then the, the pants were leather, and her legs were really, really skinny, kind of like this. And then she was wearing these really high heels that I couldn't imagine wearing. And she was just like leaning on the counter. She's like, hi. And there was pockets. But my favorite part of this outfit Truly, this was white. This, uh, there was, there's like a really tight white shirt, and it's just like with a bra strap here. And then this, I'm going to go back in with my fingernails and kind of like darken this because of the pants. But the mini backpack was the, was the strangest part of the outfit, and probably the best part. It really just was literally just hanging off. I'm going to do, I'm going to do it with this pencil because I really want. It was black also, but it was trailing about three feet behind the woman. You guys. And there was multiple pocket straps and zippers attached, almost like a, it was kind of rough and ready, like a rugged mini backpack, just like no one's going to steal it off this lady. It is strapped tight to her shoulders and waist. It is attached with mini straps. And it was very small. <laughs> like this. It's hanging off. And maybe later, oh, well, no, actually, that's, that probably wouldn't be cool, but 
I was like, I want to show the original pictures, but I think it's actually better that I don't because this is truer to what I saw than the pictures were anyway. And so the backpack was then strapped tightly to the waist, observe, tightly to, and it, and it floated like amazingly defying gravity and just bumping, <laughs> like bumping while she walked, the backpack was swaying as if in the ocean current, like one of those fish. And I think that's where all of her powers were. And like, let's make, let's indicate the movement on the backpack. So now, red hands are, I was looking at these YouTube um, videos of how to warm up when, when you're about to, when you're about to present something like public speaking or do some kind of, you know, um, you know, community theater, you will tap your face, get the muscles ready, and like make a big face and then small face, but it doesn't work with dark world. It doesn't work. So my face will be tense, and you'll have to just know that it's tense, and that I, I am unable to do those exercises. So now, you can't see what's going to happen until we un unveil her, but I'm hoping to capture the shininess of the pants. I mean, it was really like baggy in the wrong place, <laughs> baggy in the wrong places, and tight in the wrong places. The whole thing was such a spectacle. It was incredible. She was getting a lot of looks. Oh my God! I can't remember if she, I can't remember if she had really big boobs or not. I think she might have had really, really big fake boobs. But it, I, that part. I couldn't, I couldn't see it because she was turned away from me, but also the backpack distracted me because I, anytime there's a mini backpack involved or a tiny accessory that is, is like a little bit too small, any, anything that looks a little bit off balance, is, I'm more into the, the, the fashion aspect of it. Okay. And I don't remember what her boots looked like too much, but that's, that lady was just the best. Okay. So now let's see how this came out. It's probably going to be really dark because of the, Oh, it got a little too dark, but you can kind of see her through it. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit too dark because the ink is a little heavy, but she's our first one. You can see, like, if the ink too, is too thick, you get, like, way too much. But what you can do later is, like, go back in with white and lightness and, like, bring more of the dimension through there. So instead, like, what I'll do with this one, all I'll do for next, the next one is to, like, take a little bit of the ink off. Let's scrape a little bit of the ink away. I got a little excited with how much ink I was going to use. But that's what it's all about, you know? That's what it's all about. It's about the storytelling, and sometimes the result is iffy. Some of my other ones came out a little dark too earlier today, but it does get a little bit better as they, as they go along. So we'll scrape some of this ink away. Move it away from there. And save it for later in this little corner. And let's see. Let's pat some of it with this. Solution. up a little bit, get it a little bit drier on the surface, because some of these I'm going to need the whole, the whole thing for. Oops. Let's see. So I don't know what happened to that lady. I never saw her again. She was in Berkeley once, and then, I mean, I'm in Berkeley all the time, every day, and I never saw her ever, ever again. So maybe she was visiting from far away. I'd like to think she went back to Texas or maybe Walnut Creek. I don't know. She was just like such a beautiful creature. She was like a real mystical person. And I hope that she has many other, this is <laughs> very squeaky brave. I hope she has many other outfits like that at home. Okay. Let's try, okay, so that should be a little bit better, hopefully. 
and then I think probably what I'll do later with this one, because all is not lost, we can also go back in and apply all kinds of different kinds of um, materials to that. One of my favorite things to use when when I have like a, a set black background is whiteout for lightening or kind of adding highlights and things. And also opaque paint markers are also really fun to go into that. So maybe if you ever stop by the compound, you can check out some of these pieces afterward. Because I do go into them and kind of rework them a bit. But sometimes they're so perfect that you don't need to. Okay, that should that's better actually. It should have a kind of really smooth consistency. And you know, I have only been doing this technique for like I think two times, so you're completely learning as I'm learning. So the next one, okay, who am I going to do next? Okay, the next one is this boy that I saw like last Sunday in Trader Joe's. He was really straightforward. Um, if some of you maybe saw us warming up and checking the lights and microphone and maybe heard me talk about him a little bit, but he was a taller gentleman, probably, I couldn't see his face, I only from the back, I was in the produce area, looking at the grapes and the tomatoes, and I saw just the corner of him, like, sweep by, and it was this gentleman in a, with brown flowing hair and a long green cape, and he disappeared over near the oatmeal, and then reappeared later near the nuts and the jam. And he was, he was so, he, was, he moved so quickly and so fluidly as if he kind of hovered off the ground. And his cape was a dark green. I, I got a few pictures of him in movement, but only as he was turning corners. And his, he was just a, such, he was a wizard in Trader Joe's. He was a wizard shopping for frozen pizza to go online gaming. for me to even think of naming him. But that looked that looks really good. I think I got the consistency right with the, the ink at this point. So here's another one of his caves. And I'm, I want to draw him kind of more in motion. This one's a little more solid because there were times when he just... It was really the, the fashion... The cape as an accessory was its own entity. It moved like a jellyfish in the ocean separate from him. And not also, I think, the source of his power. So his hair, so when he would stop, and I didn't see him have, it, have a basket, but his hair flowed. It was so, it was actually really beautiful hair. I imagine he probably acquired his shampoo from Trader Joe's, but I don't know. I think as I'm drawing him, his name is Mark, but he has a much more magical name in his community because he doesn't have to settle for the names his parents gave him when he lived in a world where anything is possible, especially with magic, and so many lovely ladies dwell where he lives as well. Or men. We don't really know. And then he stops. And his cape stops, too. And it just... And he just stands upon a mountaintop. But really, it's just... In the 12 items or less, Line. Overlooking a great valley, but really it's just overlooking the parking lot. And there are probably shoppers with their kids sh pushing shopping carts. Because we do not have to settle for the reality that is all around. And this man refuses to do so. And because of that, he is one of my favorites. He surveys the area. He sees women and men, kids, baskets, shopping. Great deals on bananas. Frozen pizza. Power food. signs. 
green bananas. He's like, are there any yellow bananas at Trader Joe's? <laughs> no, Mark, there are not. Not there. Not, not in this world. He s just surveys the area. It's like beautiful. It's exactly. His cape looks, uh, the green is a bit too short, but that's okay. I really, but he's just like a lot of power in that cape. He's just an incredible man. Good for him. Let's put him over here. So who else did I want to capture? So I got that lady, I got him. I got, oh my god. Okay. So I thought that I would bake some cookies, hoping that I may attract a studio audience into my into my show, but like it didn't work this time. Wait. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, come on over, come on over. I do have a studio audience member. There you go. It, it worked. It worked. Thank you. And you can you can go back to to what you were doing. I'm glad that someone's. I have another person. <laughs> so, I will not be enjoying these cookies. This is my lead-in. Um, I'm gluten-free. Very proud of that. Um, it's it's part of my Berkeleyitis. I have other food allergies and fears that that you can have too if you live in Berkeley long enough. I think it's in the water. Um, you just start to develop allergies and fears and toxins and and uh, and worries and and new things to worry about and new things to be allergic to. I was in the. I'm kidding, of course, you guys. As you as I mean, that's how it is. Um, I was in the gluten-free bakery last Sunday, and I saw something that I haven't seen yet here in the Bay Area. I had only heard about this phenomenon, but I hadn't actually seen it. Um, I, I mentioned where I was because it just adds, it just helps you understand the big picture. Um, have you guys ever heard of meggings? It's, it's a legging for a man. It's spandex for a man, printed spandex for a man with built-in support to, to accommodate a man's anatomy and also enhance areas of a man that may not be as attractive in a spandex pant. I mean, you do see cyclists wearing them. Um, they're athletes, so it looks a little bit different than uh, the average man perhaps just donning a pair of incredibly tight, printed, shiny, or patterned um, spandex pants. I did see, for the first time, a man in meggings last Sunday. And not just the meggings, but he was with a woman who was in love with him. In love, I could tell by her body language. She was leaning into, he was lounging on one of the benches eating like what appeared to be like a gluten-free croissant and having some of their organic coffee and also perhaps a bagel that was um, nut-free, soy-free, dairy-free, gluten-free um, with some earth balance perhaps, and also maybe um, a delicious Danish that all, it has, it's free of allergens. She was leaning into him and just like hearing what he was saying. And this, I haven't seen anyone, I mean, if, if anyone, if he watches this, he'll know I'm talking about him. He was a larger man in these tight wood veneer leggings, like meggings, wood veneer, like the panels in your grandma's mobile home, you know. And he was wearing um, a black boat neck, you know, loose shirt. I thought he was wearing a tiny hat. It was his haircut. He was wearing um, patterned socks, thick knit socks of various turquoise and blue and yellow and Birkenstocks. And that was his outfit. And the woman was in love with him. And he was just lounging and, and displaying himself presenting himself, his leg looked like um, a, perhaps like a chicken leg or like one of those, like a cutlet. <laughs> you could buy it like, at the butcher shop. Like at first I thought he wasn't wearing pants, but on closer inspection they were, they were patterned to be flesh colored and um, I, I just have to draw him now. Oh God, he was incredible. I took, I took a couple pictures but they were from very far away. I did get a picture of the, the pant itself and can confirm that it was wood veneer. 
this is um, this is the future of man's fashion. I did some research this week about meggings, and they're uh, they're popular in other places like Europe. And it's only a matter of time before they make their their true debut here in the United States. So let's see. I want to make him lounging. So maybe I want to draw him sideways. Actually, I'm going to turn the paper, I think, and, and draw him sideways. I didn't mess it up too much. Let's see how this goes. So, so the scene was, like, the girl was wearing overalls, and, like, just hearing him just speak wisdom. He just, he was, like, she was just like this, and he was, he was just telling her about life. And just, just using his legs to just lounge and express and also show how comfortable he was in his skin. And I think he felt free for the first time in his life. I'm sorry, it's just like really sweet. <laughs> um, I thought it was I thought it was a tiny hat on his head, but it was actually his haircut, like I said. So it it was like it looked like this, and it was black. It was black hair. It looked like a little teeny tiny hat. I was like, what, what, what is, why is that guy, what is going on with that? And it was, and so then his eyebrows were here. So his forehead was, I mean, there was, there was like, so it was shaved around here. And it was shaved down around his ears. There was no hair here. It was completely shaved, like all around here. So all of this was no hair. It was just on the top. And it was actually disconnected for you hairdressers. I'm using terms. It was disconnected from the, it was shaved around and it was like disconnected from the top. Or from the sides, I mean. So it just was really almost like there was a shelf. Yes, there was a shelf. I've never seen any haircut like this. And I've been doing hair for 12 years. And I've never seen anyone actually get this extreme of a version of this, this disconnected haircut. So I can't touch the paper and it's really hard because I want to like lean down and like and do that. But um, so I'm also going to be switching utensils, utensils, materials. You know what? Did I actually, you know what? That worked better. That worked better. Where did my pencil sharpener go? I'm going to sharpen it on the floor. I'll sweep it up. I think the pencil is actually working better than the pen. So, and he was just, how was he lounging? He was just, okay, so he was lounging like this. And he was using his hands a bit to, like, to eat a bit of the scum, to be, eat a bit of the croissant, because now they have these croissants that are gluten-free for all the people that have food allergies like crazy. Who knows if they do or not? But he's just got like a bit of a croissant that he uses to almost gesture as he's describing art and, and, and society. And it's, it's the, the off the shoulder. Boat necked black shirt was also a nice addition to the pants. And he was using his arms to, I think, present to present his, how comfortable he was in the pants. It was just beautiful. I've never seen a man in spandex so free. So then he, so he, he's leaning and his shirt is loose and his, so it kind of comes down like this. And this is a bench. And his leg looks like this. And it's, it's like, he's like, oh, it looks like this. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating what I'm drawing. This is like exactly what I saw. So there's the Megging. It's, so he's, he, it's one of his Birkenstocks, actually he's, he took off his Birkenstocks later in the, uh, 
in the course of the morning and the time I was maybe there for like 20 minutes or so. And so here's the sock. It was really a full, it's a really full, soft, knit sock of many colors. But I'm going to draw the Birkenstock on this foot as if he's in the process of kicking them away and becoming more free in his, in his comfort. So the Birkenstocks were the typical kind. I think he was using them to just display that he just did not care. He just didn't care. So there's that. And it was like, this, I think they had like triangles. They were kind of 80s looking, actually. The socks had like, I think kind of an 80s print. Like little triangles and dashes or something. And that's like, just the, the other Birkenstock perhaps fell. He's like, I'm done with this. It's Sunday, I'm relaxed. The other Birkenstock just was kicked onto the ground without, without care, just there. And so, and the girl, I don't really even need to draw her. You can imagine she's over here somewhere in the foreground, like enjoying him. Uh oh. And he's just, oh, let's, let's draw the table here with all the feast, the feast of, let's draw the gluten-free croissant. It looks, it's really tiny. I haven't tried it yet. Um, and then, like, look at this abundance. This is a, one of those danishes with little almonds and there's cheese there. Like, look at the abundance. See, when you have meggings on, the possibilities for your life are endless because you've already achieved full freedom of movement. No longer does a man have to be bound by genes. This thing is like, um, maybe, though this is a bagel. This is like a, a multi-grain bagel that's free of nuts, soy, dairy, and gluten. So don't worry, there's no toxins in that. And then this is a piece of delicious gluten-free biscotti and a cup of their organic coffee. So for the next 20 minutes while you consume and enjoy this bounty, you will not have to fear those toxins entering your system. One less thing to be concerned about, Berkeley. So, so now I'm going to take my smaller pencil to try to capture the wood veneer pattern and how he was just like enjoying how he lounged like that. And I love, I think this man is one of my, my favorites because he just does not care and he's so comfortable and he doesn't care that, his, that he doesn't care that he's not an athlete or that his, that his leg looks like kind of like a chicken leg in these wood veneer leggings. But in a way, it's beautiful and his confidence is very attractive to the woman who's nearby and she's just, adores what he's saying. And he doesn't care. He just doesn't, he does not care. And he, he probably has other makings at home. Uh, they, I know they make them in the patterns of like a universe and starbursts and like little, you know, tie-dye. And also they make them shiny. And if you're, an, if you're a man who prefers that certain areas be Enhanced, they also can provide padding and enhancement in, in areas of the making if you're, con if you're concerned about certain areas not looking flattering in very tight pants. So don't worry. Like, they make that for all the men. So don't be concerned about that. If, like, there is a megging to fit every man. This is basic. I mean, if I had... So here's... It's like a wood bench. Oh, yes. It's like a wood bench. And there's like butterflies because it's like Mariposa Bakery. I'm sure you guys have been there. There's like little, and, and there are like butterflies everywhere on the walls. It's a really nice place. So let's see how he came out. But let's make more lines indicate the Birkenstock just like hit the floor without care. Like, who, get, who cares? Who gives a shit? This is. This is 
Sunday, and I'm a man. How did he come out? Oh, yes. Look at him. Oh my gosh, he's just enjoying himself. That's so good. Those ma- that looks, those pants look intense, but that's exactly what they look like. I would have drawn more dark here, but I think that would have gotten clouded out. But you can just imagine that his shirt was a nice black. It was all, it looked fairly new, and it was all very um, well ironed and falling off his shoulders nicely. He, he knew what he was doing. He was great. Okay, do I, now who, who's next? Oh, I'm going to try to, how much time do I have? Because I don't want to, I don't want to like forget the last, like the last one is like the biggest one. Oh, do you know what time it is? Oh, I have my phone. Oh my gosh. Time flies. Let's do the, let's do the one that I was really, really wanting to do, what sparked the whole, um, the whole theme of April, which was sightings. And these are just really mild cases, too. There are some really gnarly ones that I'm sure Julia will, will help us discover. We're get, next week we're going to do, it's almost like, you know, when the detectives hire an artist and they, they draw after you've been in, like, Julie has seen some traumatizing things because she is in the fashion industry, so she has seen some, and she's, she's told me about them, and it's, like, almost hard to believe some of the stuff that she's witnessed. So I'm really looking forward to having her on the show and drawing. And we've done this before where I'll draw stuff that she's seen, and... We've had a whole show about it here at the compound. I think it was last year. We did a whole show about the shoes of Berkeley, which were a lot of Julie sightings. She worked with me on that. So I'm so excited to have her on the show next week. And also for the whole month of April, be on the lookout. And you can also send me sightings too. And if they're really good, I will illustrate them on my show. And you can do that by interacting with the compound site here, or you can email... You can email me from my website, alisonsarp.com, and see more of my work. I'm a printmaker and a painter. I'm an illustrator, and I do all kinds of stuff. So please visit my site, and, and if you have any sightings ideas, feel free to email me. Okay, the next, this is messy. So much ink. The next couple that I'm going to that I'm going to try to depict in, in their, their natural essence. Um, two gentlemen that I saw when I was in the Castro, uh, this was probably a couple of months ago. Um, I was walking past this restaurant, it's like 10 in the morning, I was with my boyfriend and we were having coffee, and I catch this image of two huge men, huge, they are like huge men, at a table, one in a blue shirt, one in a yellow shirt, looking almost identical, both drinking tiny martinis at 10 in the morning. And I was like, oh my God, look at those guys. Like, they're incredible. Look at their shirts. They're like matching shirts, matching tiny martinis, 10 in the morning. Uh, We have to name them. We have to make up a story about them. So we did. And their names are Walter and Travis. One was older, one was younger, but they were the cutest couple I've ever seen. Ever, ever. Like, I can't even tell you how much I love these two guys. Um, They're so cute. Their mannerisms were adorable. They were, they were so happy. It was, maybe they were on vacation, or maybe they lived there. I've I've never seen them before, and I go down to that neighborhood pretty often, and I've never seen them. I love that they were wearing almost identical matching shirts, and I loved that they did not care that it was 10 in the morning. Their martinis were so small, and they were so big that it was like a cartoon. So I have, I think Walter was the older one and he is bigger than Travis. So I have like, oh God, I hope this works because, okay, so Walter and then there's Travis is going to be there. So I, per, before I got here, I ran the tissue paper through the press and got the colors down. And this thing I haven't, well, I actually, yeah, I did it with the, the cape, the kid in the cape too. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to have to sit up on the table. That's what I'm going to do. This is like playing pool because I want to. Oh, yeah. we. Have <laughs> I thought people at the studio would smell the cookies and come sit down. But so far, we just have a, we just have a, okay, I'm going to get up on the table. 
<laughs> get up on the table. And I'm gonna. So Travis, and they were so sweet. Like Travis and Walter were in love with each other. Their hair was so nicely parted. They didn't look like they were from the area. I don't know where they were from. But they were large men in love. And there's nothing more adorable than two nearly 400 pound men in love with each other, in my book. So Walter's a little older than Travis. I think Walter might have been maybe in his 50s and Travis was po possibly a bit younger than him, maybe in his 40s. But it was such a beautiful morning and we had our Starbucks and we just saw their love just through the window. I don't remember what this restaurant was called. And it was like a bar or something. But their shirts were really cute. They were polo shirts. They were polo shirts that were, like, you know, with the collars and the little, and the little pocket. The pocket was the cutest part, because when are you going to fit in the little pocket, you guys? And then here's the table. And I drew a picture of, um, of, of Travis this, um, this afternoon and posted it on Instagram. He was like, I was kind of practicing to see how they would turn out. And here's his little teeny little martini. It's so small. So small. I could not believe. Like a, t a, a man that size would order a drink so tiny, but it was 10 in the morning. But he loved Travis, and Travis loved Walter. Oh, and then Walter, or then Travis over here. They even kind of had like matching hair a little bit. And I think, um, I don't know where they could be from. But I think that Travis looks a bit tired. Maybe they had a rough night. But he's still having, he's still having like a lovely morning. Oh my god, they're just like the best. I love these two guys. And I never saw them again. It was just like that one time that I saw them and I just like fell in love with their love. Like, oh, those guys are so cute. Little tiny martini. And their shirts. I wonder if they shop together. Do you guys think they shop together? Wouldn't that be the best if they shop together and they like they go to the where the where the large men shop and they just like have these shopping bags and they just like they just carry them and then they carry them down the street and then they go have a snack and then they just go home and watch T V or something. And they're like, What are you gonna wear when we go have martinis this morning? I'm wearing my blue shirt, what are you gonna wear? Oh well, I'm wearing my yellow shirt, so don't wear your yellow shirt. Because we don't want to be matchy match. No twinsies. Two pockets on this one. Oh yeah, and like cute little. I forgot how polo shirts have those little buttons. Oh, that's exactly what it looked. This is like exactly what it looked like. So, uh oh, I put my hands in some ink. I hope this is like this is gonna get messy, but um, I want to do. I kind of don't want to clutter it too much with more detail. Maybe I'll, I'll kind of depict their hair. Because I do want to add like a little bit of dark lines. But with these kinds of prints, 
if you add too much detail, it just gets really muddy, kind of like. And you have to use, if you want more pressure than, or more black, you have to use more pressure. Oh, it's like cute. This is so good. Yeah, this is that's Tra like Walter is definitely a little older than Travis, and his his haircut is that of a a man of a different generation. If, along with his, that's why we named him Walter. Actually, my boyfriend came up with Walter's name because um, he's like you have to name him something that is like a different generation not the same generation, because he was definitely older. So I do have help coming up with these things. I have a lot of, I have a lot of support. Oh, please work. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so beautiful. Walter and Travis. I have to look at it, too. I want to see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. They're so great. That's exactly what they look like. I'm glad they're little martinis. I'm really glad that some black actually printed at the bottom because I was like, this is not going to, it's a large piece of paper and it's not going to have enough, um, uh oh, where's my dress? But, um, it's not going to have enough contrast or, any, or enough interest of lights and darks, but I really like the way that printed at the bottom there with the heavier ink. Oh, that's so cute. And I think it just, it really captures them. So I think what's, what, what's going to be really fun too is to go back in with, other materials like a colored pencil or like different pens and kind of add color to their faces or to you know to the table or or the little olives and the martinis and it's great once you set the, the lines down that you can always go back and rework it so these so Walter and Travis I love them I'll probably draw them again because I'm pretty much obsessed with them and like <laughs> and I think that they even need their own short story or their own comic strip or their own, like, they need to be movie reviewers or something. They're just the best. And I hope one day I run into them again. Um, and they, I can maybe give them this. I don't know if they'd like it or not, but I think they might. But they probably have totally different names, and maybe they're brothers. <laughs> I don't even know. But it doesn't matter. It's just really fun to, to just, like, watch people and be inspired by all the crazy stuff that we do. So I think that we are almost out of time on Dark World. I think that might be that might be near the end. Do we have how, what time is it? Is it time? We're going to call it. So, thank you everyone who watched. And next week, Julie from Splash is going to be here. We're going to be doing. Um, she's going to be describing things. I'm going to be drawing them. It should be really really funny. If you want to be in the studio audience, please message me or the compound, and you can come down at six. We have cookies. And you will probably get a hug and a big thank you. We need laugh tracks and we need clapping and we need like it's fun to have participation. So if you're interested in doing that, let us know. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next week for Dark World. 